What we are building today is a way for the user to select a date through a fancy slider interface and bring the selected data directly to a pro form. To create this, we will combine different functionalities of Bricksforge. Before we start with the Bricks Builder, we create the post type tours. And for this new post type, we're gonna create a repeater field. And in this repeater field, we're gonna store the date of the tour. And this will be the data we want to loop later. For Bricks forms, it's important to choose exactly this date format. After creating this data, we are able to add multiple dates for a tour and this is exactly what we want to do. In the Bricks Builder, we set up a structure for the custom date picker. We are using nestable tabs and inside the first tab, we're gonna use a nestable slider. For the tabs wrapper, we create a query loop and what we want to loop is the previously created post type tours. This way you could display as many tours you want. Here, we want to show only a specific one. For the single tour element, which is a slider item, we create a query loop as well and here we are looping through the repeater field which is storing the date. With dynamic data, we display the day number using a Briggs filter. This way we have the full date as original data, but we send only the day number to the browser. For the single tour, we are gonna add some data attributes. We want to save the post ID of the tour and the value of the date field. We're gonna use these values later. Also, we are creating some CSS styles for an active class. This will be the class we want to pass after selecting one element. When checking the front end, we see that the data is populating correctly. And when inspecting the code, we can see that the data attributes we have added also have the correct data. With the Bricksforge panel, we're gonna create a logic for selecting items. We create a click event to the class which we have passed to the single tour element and we want to select all elements with this selector. Then in the first step, for all elements with this selector, we are gonna remove existing active classes and in the second step, we are gonna add an active class to the triggered element. The triggered element is the element which is receiving our mouse click. When checking the front end, we can see that the selected item will change the style and this is because it receives our active class and this is the class for which we have created styles before. Now we need to add a new URL to our button. We add the link of the page where a pro form is included and additionally we add some query params. This is data we can include to the link and use it later to populate the fields of our pro form. As param, we include the post ID of the selected tour. Using the Bricksforge panel, we're gonna add a param for the selected data as well. We create a new event instance, which will also be a click event. For this event, we want to prevent the default behavior. If the button is clicked, we want to run an action. For our case, we choose the action JavaScript to add some custom code. We save the current selected item into a variable. Then we get the date through the data attribute we have added and if everything is there, we're gonna add the date param to the URL. Finally, we open the link. If we now click the button, we should be navigated to a URL like this. We should see two params here. Tour containing the post ID and date containing the date of the tour. The second page contains the pro forms element. We start the page using a headline with the information about the user selection. We are using the additional Bricksforge dynamic data here, which gives us the possibility to show dynamic data for a custom post ID. In this case, we need a post title. As you can see, we grab the post ID from the URL tour param. And for the date, we are using the date param. Also, we set up a condition to show the set line only if the URL contains our information. The pro forms part is really easy. We just need to set an initial value using the same URL param as before. And that's it. The form will now set the value depending on the URL data. And if we check our entire logic, we can see that everything works as expected. I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you a lot of fun trying it out. By the way, if you are looking for Bricksforge tutorials related to GSAP animations, check out the Bricks Motion channel. You will find many fancy stuff there. My name is Daniel, see you next time.